Hey, I'm Max Fly Tires. Welcome back to Tying Tuesdays. My name is Brady Lair, and today we're going to show you how to tie the Missing Link Caddis. This is a Mike Mercer pattern, Umqua Feather Merchants Royalty Tire, a really coolly designed caddis imitation here, kind of a spent caddis. So we're going to start it out with our hook, get this in the vise. This is the 2302 from TMCO. Great for this pattern. It's got a little bit of that curvature to the shank there and a nice elongated profile. So we'll start out with our thread. This is just a UTC 70 denier and the light olive. And I'm tying it on a 14 today. First thing we'll add in is a little bit of flash. This will be the ribbing for this fly. And we're gonna use something that's fairly new to Avid Max here. This is a Semperfly material. It's a Paragon body, but it's just a nice fine tinsel. And this is the iridescent purple color. I really like the purple on the olive. Just some cool contrast, something a little different. So we'll go ahead and tie that right on in on top. And we're gonna keep just a thread body to this fly, so we'll lay down nice, even thread wraps right back on forward, securing that tinsel in place. Fairly thin profile bug, but I am gonna walk back one time and add just a slight taper to it, so we'll go a little bit past that halfway point and then transition back on up. where we can hang our thread out. And we're gonna hang a little ways back, about three eye lengths behind the finishing point there to give us room for the other materials. And then we can wrap the tinsel with some open wraps. Again, just for that segmentation. And that purple really pops out once it gets on top of the darker shade of this green thread. Once we get to where our threads hang in, we'll capture it. And lock that in place, take out that extra material. And throw down a little bit of dubbing. This is just going to be a slight dubbing ball. It's a little bit of our prop for the next few materials, the spent wing and then the elk hair wing. So I don't need too much of this, just a pretty light W noodle here. This is the ice dub olive brown color. It's a really versatile color. Go ahead and build that dubbing ball here. Nice and tight. And add our spent wing. So I think he uses Zelon, which is a, a popular material for Mike Mercer patterns. I have the sparkle emergery on that you've seen a substitute in the past. And you thin it out pretty good. If you, if you pull it off the hank, this is about a half of what actually comes on a single strand or, or grouping off of the hank of that Sparkle Emerger yarn. Same thing if you're using the Zelon or the Antron are both good substitutes. And we'll tie it in right on one side. I'm gonna do it right on the side of the shank with half of it hanging over the top. And I do want the wing to go just downward a little bit. That way it'll kind of lay on the water and also sort of stay out of the way once we go to do some of the other tying points of this pattern. So we'll pull it over and mirror, mirror it on the far side. And then we can kind of just leave that hanging out downward out the back for now. I do just another little tiny bit of the dubbing on the front end of this. It's not necessary, but helps me a little bit with the wing. So I'll lay down just a little bit more. We'll throw down a thread base up here. And then we can add our hackle. So the hackle we're using today is a bit of this whiting golden badger color, which is an awesome little color. And I do have one prepped here Went ahead and pulled off some of the barbels, got a nice clean stem to tie in. 
And we're gonna lay this flat on top because it's gonna wrap in just like a post. Or on a post rather, and the elk wing is actually gonna be what the post is. So we'll secure right on top. Make sure that's snug in place, not gonna move on us. And then walk right back to where that dubbing ball was and we'll throw our wing down. It's good old bleached elk hair for this guy. So we'll grab a clump, not too big, not as much as you'd use on a regular elk hair caddis, a little bit thinner than that. And go ahead and clean that out real nice. Get all that under fur out of there. All those broken tips. And then we'll go ahead and stack it. Get the tips aligned nicely for us. We'll do that one more time here. We can measure out how long we want. I like to go right to the back of that fly where that body's ending. And we can tie that in right on top here. Do a couple of loose wraps over top, make sure it's secure. Got the length we want, and then we can really bite down on it. And lock it in, and then we're gonna sneak our thread right in front. And build a slight dam. Trap some of those hackles. I'm just gonna cut those out of the way. It's a little bit of a thread dam to keep that elk hair hanging up. And then what I like to do is I'll pull all the elk hair upward and we're gonna turn this into sort of a post. Don't wanna grab anything else. So this can be one of the tricky parts of this fly. Everything out of the way here. I want just the elk hair. And then I'll take my thread and I'll go up and around the post like you would, just one time, and then land it on the side closest to me. So now my thread's actually set up to go in the reverse position, and that'll be helpful for when we get this hackle wrapped around we'll be able to capture it. Having that thread around it first helps get that first couple wraps of hackle going just nice and snug around this elk hair. And then once you have it a couple times, three times around, then you can come back to you, take that thread right where it lays and sneak up and under everything, capturing it and locking it down. And I'll go around it about three times and then land back on the far side so my thread's back into that natural tying position. From there, we can clip out the extra hackle hanging out here. Save that for another fly. Gonna sneak my thread, pull everything up and out of the way. And then I want to advance my thread behind the hook eye so we can do just a nice traditional whip finish on this. Another challenging part to get all the hackle out of the way. You might end up trapping some, but if you can avoid it, just make things easier. So a couple of thread wraps there, and then I'm going to sneak my whip finish in. And the same thing, try and get everything out of the way here to whip finish this fly. So a few turns there, lock that in place. And we can clip it on out with whatever hackle we might have trapped. 
Do get a couple there. Now we're gonna trim everything up. So I'm just gonna pull this merger yarn right on back to the bend, clip it off right at the back there, and then try and split our elk hair into the tips and the butt sections. And then we're gonna sneak right down the butt sections and clip it off sort of like an elk hair caddis. Try not to cut any of that hackle. Kind of a scraggly, messy looking fly, but works great as that imitation for a spent wing caddis. Or just a tra transitional caddis. Cool little messy, buggy looking fly from Mike Mercer. And on this one, I always like to come in also on the bottom and add some zappy gap right over that thread, kind of the naked thread area there. We'll get some glue on our bodkin and throw it down right on top or right on bottom rather. There you are, the missing link.